Ogilvy is a New York City-based British advertising, marketing, and public relations agency. It was founded in 1850 by Edmund Mather as a London-based agency. In 1964, the firm became known as Ogilvy & Mather after merging with a New York City agency that was founded in 1948 by David Ogilvy. The agency is known for its work with Dove, American Express, and IBM. It is now part of the WPP Group, one of the largest advertising and public relations companies in the world. The company provides services in six areas, brand strategy, advertising, customer engagement and commerce, public relations and influence, digital transformation, and partnerships. The company's strategy division Ogilvyrid became Ogilvy Consulting. History Topic foundation The agency was founded in London in 1850, when Edmund Charles Mather began an advertising agency on Fleet Street. After his death in 1886, his son, Harley Lawrence Mather, partnered with Herbert Oakes Crowther, and the agency became known as Mather & Crowther. The agency pioneered newspaper advertising, which was in its infancy, due to a loosening of tax restrictions, and educated manufacturers about the efficacy of advertising while producing how -to manuals for the nascent advertising industry. The company grew in prominence in the 1920s after creating leading non-branded advertising campaigns such as An Apple a Day Keeps the Doctor Away and Drink a Pinta Milk a Day. In 1921, Mather and Crowther hired Francis Ogilvy as a copywriter. Ogilvy eventually became the first non-family member to chair the agency. When the agency launched the Aga Cooker, a Swedish cook stove, Francis composed letters in Greek to appeal to British public schools, the appliance's best sales leads. Francis also helped his younger brother, David Ogilvy, secure a position as an Aga salesman. The younger Ogilvy was so successful at selling the cooker, he wrote a sales manual for the company in 1935 called The Theory and Practice of Selling the Aga Cooker. It was later called probably the best sales manual ever written by Fortune magazine. David Ogilvy sent the manual to Francis, who was persuaded to hire him as a trainee. Ogilvy began studying advertising, particularly campaigns from America, which he viewed as the gold standard. In 1938, David Ogilvy convinced Francis to send him to the United States on sabbatical to study American advertising. After a year, Ogilvy presented 32 basic rules of good advertising to Mather and Crowther. Over the next ten years, Ogilvy worked in research at the Gallup Polling Company, worked for British intelligence during World War II, and then spent a few years farming among the Amish community in Pennsylvania. In 1948, David Ogilvy proposed that Mather and Crowther and another UK agency, S.H. Benson, partner to create an American advertising agency in New York City to support British advertising clients. The agencies each invested US$40,000 in the venture but insisted Ogilvy find a more experienced American to run it. David Ogilvy recruited Anderson Hewitt from J. Walter Thompson to serve as president and to supervise sales. Ogilvy would serve as secretary, treasurer, and research director. Along with their British sponsors, which held a controlling interest, Hewitt mortgaged his house and invested $14,000 in the agency and Ogilvy invested $6,000. 
Topic Hewitt, Ogilvy, Benson and Mather On September 23, 1948, David Ogilvy opened his New York agency as Hewitt, Ogilvy, Benson, and Mather on Madison Avenue in Manhattan. Initially, Mather and Crowther and S.H. Benson gave the agency four clients that had small advertising budgets and were relatively unknown in the United States, Wedgwood China, British South African Airways, Guinness, and Bovril, Hewitt, Ogilvy, Benson, and Mather's first account was securing magazine advertising space for Wedgwood. The agency had its first successful ad with Ogilvy's concept, The Guinness Guide to Oysters, which was followed by several other similar food and Guinness pairing guides. The first large client was Sunoco, then called Sun Oil, procured by Hewitt in February 1949. Helena Rubinstein Cosmetics was the first client won by Ogilvy. A breakthrough came after the agency was approached by Maine based shirt manufacturer C.F. Hathaway Company. The company only had a small budget, but its president promised to never change a word of copy. In 1951, they introduced the Man in the Hathaway Shirt campaign. The advertisement featured an aristocratic man wearing an eye patch that Ogilvy purchased on the way to the ad's photo shoot. Hathaway was sold out of shirts within a week of the first ad's printing. The campaign increased the shirt maker's sales by 160%, resulted in new business for the agency, and turned the recognizable Hathaway man and his eye patch into a popular cultural trope. Topic Ogilvy, Benson and Mather Disagreements between Hewitt and Ogilvy, particularly about creative direction and who should run the agency, resulted in Ogilvy's resignation in 1953. The agency's backers supported Ogilvy, leading to Hewitt's resignation and the agency reopening as Ogilvy, Benson and Mather in 1954. Ogilvy hired retired Benton and Bowles executive Esty Stoll in 1956 to handle operations and non creative functions. During the 1950s, Ogilvy, Benson, and Mather became known for its successful campaigns, which David Ogilvy called Big Ideas. The agency, mainly under Ogilvy's creative direction, built a reputation for quality advertising, which was defined by its use of well-researched long copy, large photographs, and clean layouts and topography. Ogilvy believed advertising's purpose was to sell through information and persuasion, as opposed to entertaining. That same year, the agency nearly doubled in size after winning the Shell Oil account. The agency agreed to work for Shell on a fee basis rather than the traditional commission model and became one of the first major advertising agencies to do so. Topic Ogilvy and Mather In reaction to the growth of international advertising, Ogilvy, Benson and Mather formed an equal partnership with Mather and Crowther in November 1964. Under the terms of the partnership, the two agencies became subsidiaries of a new parent company called Ogilvy and Mather, which was headquartered in New York. In January 1965, both changed their names to Ogilvy and Mather and the parent company became known as Ogilvy and Mather International Inc. During the 1970s, Ogilvy and Mather acquired numerous other agencies, including S. H. Benson, one of its original sponsors, in 1971, Scully, McCabe, Sloves in 1976, and Cohn and Weber in 19. 77. Another acquisition, Hodes Daniel, resulted in the establishment of the agency's direct response service, called Ogilvy and Mather Direct, in 1976. 
It was renamed Ogilvy One Worldwide in 1997. The agency's growth through acquisitions was not led by Ogilvy, who feared the differing philosophies of the acquired agencies would undermine Ogilvy and Mather's culture and advertising beliefs, which he called the «true church». After moving permanently to his French castle Château de Tufo in 1973, David Ogilvy stepped down as chairman and became worldwide creative head in 1975. 1980s The agency opened its public relations division, Ogilvy and Mather Public Relations, in 1980. The next year, Ogilvy and Mather established the Interactive Marketing Group and became the first major agency to establish an interactive capability. In December 1983, David Ogilvy retired as creative head. In 1985, Ogilvy and Mather International was renamed as the Ogilvy Group Inc. The group included three divisions Ogilvy and Mather Worldwide, a new name for all Ogilvy and Mather offices, including Ogilvy and Mather Direct and Ogilvy and Mather Public Relations, Scully McCabe Sloves Group, and several independent associate agencies, such as Cole and Weber. Kenneth Roman, president of Ogilvy and Mather United States, was named president of Ogilvy and Mather Worldwide, and was promoted to chairman in 1987. He became chairman of the Ogilvy Group in 1988, succeeding Graham Phillips. In 1989, WPP plc, a British advertising holding company, acquired the Ogilvy Group for $864 million, which, at the time, was the most ever paid for an advertising agency. David Ogilvy initially resisted the sale, but eventually accepted the title of WPP Honorary Chairman, a position he relinquished in 1992, following the departure of Roman for American Express in 1989, Graham Phillips became the chairman and CEO of Ogilvy and Mather Worldwide. 1990s In 1992, Charlotte Beers replaced Graham Phillips as chairman and CEO of Ogilvy and Mather Worldwide. Phillips remained as vice chairman. Beers was recruited from the Tatham, Laird and Kudner advertising agency and was the first outsider to lead Ogilvy and Mather. She was also the first woman to lead a major international agency. Beers introduced the concept of brand stewardship to the agency, a philosophy of brand building over time. She is also credited with helping Ogilvy and Mather bring in new business after a downturn. In 1994, then North America President Shelley Lazarus and Beers helped win the entire global account of Information Technology Corporation IBM for the agency. Worth an estimated $500 million in billings, it was the largest account shift in the history of advertising. After four years, Beers stepped down as CEO. Lazarus, a 23 year veteran of the agency, was appointed CEO in 1996 and became chairman the next year. It was the first time a woman succeeded another woman at a major agency. Lazarus further developed Beer's brand stewardship approach by introducing 360 degree branding, the idea of communicating a brand message at every touch point the brand has with people. David Ogilvy died at age 88 in the Chateau de Tufo, his home, in July 1999. 2000s Ogilvy purchased the Federalist Group, a Republican lobbying firm, in 2005. 
The Federalist Group subsequently became bipartisan, changing its name to Ogilvy Government Relations. In 2005, Shona Seifert and Thomas Early, two former directors of Ogilvy and Mather, were convicted of one count of conspiring to defraud the government and nine counts of filing false claims for Ogilvy, over billing for advertising work done for the United States Office of National Drug Control Policy account. The agency was hired by the ONDCP in 1998 to create anti-drug ads aimed at adolescents. At the time, it was the largest social marketing contract in history. Ogilvy and Mather repaid $1.8 million to the government to settle a civil suit based on the same billing issues. Miles Young became worldwide CEO in January 2009 after leading the company's Asia Pacific division for 13 years. Lazarus remained SS chairman until 2012, when Young succeeded her. Under Young's leadership, the agency focused on a «Twin Peaks» strategy of producing advertisements that are equally creative and effective. New business was also Young's priority. Young promoted Tham Kai Meng, his creative partner in the Asia-Pacific division, as worldwide chief creative officer in 2009. Tham laid out a five-year plan to improve the agency's performance at Cannes. According to Adweek, Tham's efforts resulted in the agency being named Cannes Lions Network of the Year from 2011 to 2015. 2010s In 2010, the agency established Ogilvirid, a specialty strategic consultancy. In June 2013, Ogilvy Action, the agency's activation unit, merged with other WPP-owned properties, G2 Worldwide and JW Taction, to form Geometry Global, an activation network that operates in 56 markets. Ogilvy's production division, Redworks Worldwide, merged with production company Hogarth Worldwide, forming Hogarth and Ogilvy in March 2015 to serve the production needs of all of WPP's agencies. The agency was named both the Can Lions Network of the Year and Clio Network of the Year for four consecutive years, 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. It was also named EFI's World's Most Effective Agency Network in 2012, 2013, and 2016. Ogilvy Public Relations in China faced accusations in the media of overworking a 24 year old employee who died of a heart attack while in the office in May 2013. The claims were not confirmed. Four years later, a similar event occurred with a young staffer in the Philippines. In June 2015, Young announced he would retire as both worldwide chairman and CEO to take the position of warden at his alma mater, New College at Oxford University. In January 2016, John Seifert was named CEO of the agency. In November 2017, according to reports, Ogilvy and Mather won the Terespana account, worth €2 million, Euros, similar to other advertising, marketing, and public relations agencies in the years leading up to 2017 2018. Ogilvy has seen an influx of advertisers and publishers establishing in house creative teams, and an industry wide increase in emphasis on digital media ad buying. The magazine Fast Company wrote, over the years, Ogilvy responded to changing demands by creating numerous businesses and looked more like a holding company of its own. By 2018, Ogilvy was organized as a number of individual units that handled different areas of focus. Ogilvy Public Relations was responsible for the agency's public relations offering. 
Ogilvy One was the agency's direct marketing unit and it also advised clients on customer engagement. The firm's Ogilvy Common Health Worldwide unit focused on healthcare communications and marketing. The agency handled production work through Hogarth and Ogilvy, a joint venture between Ogilvy and Mather and Hogarth Worldwide formed in 2015. Neo at Ogilvy was a unit of the agency that offered digital media services to all of Ogilvy and Mather's disciplines. As of 2013, sales activation and shopper marketing were administered through Geometry Global, a unit formed through the merger of several WPP agencies, including what was previously known as Ogilvy Action. In addition to the agency's main services, Ogilvy and Mather operated several other specialty practices. In 2010, the agency created Ogilvy Noor, a practice focused on creating marketing that appeals to Muslims. Ogilvyrid was established in 2011 as a consultancy within the agency that worked with Ogilvy's other units to prepare plans for clients' marketing strategies. The agency formed Social at Ogilvy in 2012 to work on social media projects for clients. The practice operated within each of Ogilvy and Mather's major units, including advertising, direct marketing, public relations, and digital marketing. The behavioral sciences practice hashtag Ogilvy Change was also founded in 2012 by Rory Sutherland in Ogilvy and Mather's London office. Hashtag Ogilvy Change employed psychologists and other behavioral scientists to consult on using research in these fields to understand and influence consumers. Ogilviamp short for Amplify handled tasks related to the data planning and analytics needs of clients. The unit was established in 2014 and was present at over 50 of the agency's offices. Ogilvy Pride was formed in the agency's London office in 2015 as an LGBT practice. Company leadership said Ogilvy became too complicated with these individual units. CEO John Seifert launched the company's refounding in June 2018, during which the company changed its name from Ogilvy and Mather to Ogilvy, restructured, and rolled out a new, unified brand and logo to simplify its services. All but one of Ogilvy's sub brands were wrapped into one Ogilvy. The company retained its separate strategy division, but renamed it to Ogilvy Consulting. Topic: Major work. Topic: Early ads. One of the agency's first accounts was Guinness, which tasked it with introducing the beer to an American audience. In 1950, the Guinness Guide to Oysters appeared as a magazine advertisement that listed nine kinds of oysters and their characteristics. The advertisement was successful, and several other pairing guides, including those on birds and cheeses, followed it. In 1951, The Man in the Hathaway Shirt, an advertisement created for C.F. Hathaway Company, was first published in The New Yorker. It immediately increased sales for the company, and more ads followed. Each ad featured George Rangel, a middle-aged man with a mustache and an eye patch. The eye patch was a prop found by David Ogilvy to give the ad what he called story appeal. Ambassador Lewis Douglas, who wore an eye patch, inspired the concept to familiarize Americans with Schweppes. The agency created a spokesman named Commander Whitehead. 
Edward Whitehead, who was the company's president, was introduced as the commander in a 1952 advertisement, which showed him arriving in New York with a briefcase labeled as the Secrets of Schweppes. The campaign resulted in Schweppes becoming the standard tonic used in the country. The campaign continued into the 1960s. In the 1950s, Ogilvy was hired to increase business in Puerto Rico. The agency created a coupon for businesses that laid out tax advantages of establishing a presence on the island. Approximately 14,000 businesses mailed in the coupon and the territory's foreign industry increased. Following this, David Ogilvy helped Puerto Rico's governor establish and advertise the Casals Festival of Music. The agency created ads using visually captivating images to position the island as a paradise. In 1952, Ogilvy and Mather launched a campaign to increase tourism for the British Tourist Authority. The Come to Britain campaign replaced drawings with photographs of the picturesque countryside. The advertisements resulted in the tripling of tourism to the UK, after the agency was assigned the Rolls-Royce account in 1959, David Ogilvy spent three weeks meeting with engineers and researching the car. The resulting advertisement featured the headline At 60 miles an hour the loudest noise in this new Rolls Royce comes from the electric clock, which Ogilvy took, giving credit, from a journalist's review. The rest of the copy outlined 11 of the car's distinguishing features and benefits. The advertisement became one of Ogilvy's most famous. Ogilvy joked that the ad sold so many cars we dare not run it again. Topic: <laughs> Later notable campaigns. Topic: American Express. American Express had been an Ogilvy and Mather client since the 1960s. The agency launched the company's Do You Know Me campaign in 1974, which focused on the prestige of carrying an American Express card. Each advertisement described the accomplishments of semi-recognizable celebrities who used the card, with their identities being revealed at the end. The campaign emphasized that even if a person was not immediately recognizable, their American Express credit card would be. The campaign ran until 1987. A campaign called Portraits, which followed Do You Know Me, showed card carrying personalities such as Tip O'Neill and Ella Fitzgerald engaged in leisure activities. The campaign was photographed by Annie Leibovitz and named Print Campaign of the Decade by Advertising Age in 1990. Ogilvy and Mather launched the slogan My Life. My Card, in 2004 with ads featuring celebrities such as Ellen DeGeneres and Tiger Woods, in June 2017, American Express shifted almost all the business it had with Ogilvy to McGarry Bowen. Topic Merrill Lynch Ogilvy and Mather won Merrill Lynch's print and television advertising business in the late 1960s. In 1971, the agency suggested using a bull as a symbol of the company. The visual became the company's logo. IBM In 1994, Ogilvy and Mather replaced multiple agencies to become IBM's sole agency for all of the company's marketing and branding efforts. The worldwide campaign Solutions for a Small Planet was launched to help rebrand the company. Topic Incredible India Ogilvy and Mather created the slogan Incredible India for the country's Ministry of Tourism in 2002. 
The campaign targeted an international audience and aimed to boost tourism. Topic Dove Dove became an Ogilvy and Mather client in the 1950s, and the agency developed the brand's one-quarter cleansing cream messaging. In 2004, the agency launched the Dove Campaign for Real Beauty, a marketing campaign that focused on redefining society's pre-set definitions of beauty. A short film called Sketches earned over 114 million views online and Business Insider named it the most viral ad of all time in 2013. Topic controversies An online video created by Ogilvy and Mather UK as viral marketing for the Ford Sportka hatchback was disseminated via email in 2004, despite being rejected by Ford of Europe. The 40-second video, which showed a lifelike computer-generated cat being decapitated by the car's sunroof, led to criticisms from bloggers and animal rights groups. Both companies apologized for its release and launched investigations into how the video was leaked. In 2014, Ogilvy India created Bounce Back, a campaign for Indian mattress company Curl on that illustrated the stories of well known figures who bounced back from adversity. The low point of each narrative arc showed the person rebounding off of a curl on mattress. One of the ads featured Malala Yousafzai and depicted her being shot. The ad was criticized in the media, and Ogilvy and Mather issued a public apology to Yousafzai and her family. Also in 2014, Ogilvy and Mather apologized following complaints about the racial implications of an advertisement it created for the South African charity Feed a Child. The advertisement portrayed a black boy being fed like a dog by a white woman. Topic. See also David Ogilvy WPPPLC